In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the new button slicer feature to beautify your slicers in your Power BI reports. We're gonna go through how you can enable and start using it, some basic formatting options available to you, as well as going through a simple example and going through step-by-step -step on how you can use this feature for yourself. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the new button slicer was released as part of the November update, and I really wanted to cover it because it addresses some of my limitations and issues with the current slicer available to you. So let me show you what we're going to build today, first of all. So here we are in my sample data set, the Northwind data sets, and I've already created the visual that I want to try to recreate today using the new button slicer. So here, what I'm highlighting at the moment is the current or the, the old uh, slicer options that, that is available to you. And this new one here is the, the new button slicer that we're going to try to recreate today. So as you can see, as you select some values, it works the same way as the other visuals. It you know slices the other charts or visuals in your report page. Um, but what, as you can see, it has a lot more customization options than the current slicer. So uh, let me show you the current one. So page two here doesn't have the, the one that we're gonna create today, just to show you some of the limitations. So if I select here, and as you can see, you know, it works the same way as the new button slicer. And the only difference is that, uh, let's say we want to do some more customization on it. And typically with my reports, I customize, you know, my page colors, maybe go in dark mode. And the problem with this current slicer setup is that it doesn't allow me to change a lot of its properties. So if we go to the properties pane here, the format pane for the slicer, as you can see beyond the size and title, we don't really have a lot of things that we can customize. So we might be able to customize the slider header, but let's say we just want to customize the color when it's being highlighted or what is selected. We don't want maybe black because maybe the background is black and it doesn't really go well. If we search for some formatting here for color, as you can see, there is no option for you to do that. There might be other things here that you can customize, but the fact is you can't really customize the slicer to your kind of to your format that you want, which now the new button slicer solves. So to start using this feature, you just need to make sure your Power BI desktop is up to date to at least the November 2023 version. You also need to make sure that uh, it is enabled on the preview features on the settings. So if you go to the gear icon here on the bottom right, go to preview features, just make sure that the button slicer visual is enabled here so that you can start using this feature. So let's go through the motions and let's have a look at some of the basic features that you can do or you can customize with this new feature. So here we're going to convert this uh, slicer to a the new button slicer here. So it looks a little bit different, uh, but that's fine because we're gonna go through uh, sort of slowly customizing that to how I showed it to you at the beginning on page one. So at the moment, it doesn't look exactly the same as the previous one, and that's because of the layout. So we're just gonna adjust that quickly here. So first, what we're going to do is uh, we're gonna increase the rows and decrease the columns. And that's what's causing this view to happen like this. So we're just going to make sure that the row is eight and then the columns are just one. So that just forces them to be vertical. But as you know, or you know, the options you will see later, you can also have these options to be horizontal so that you can adjust it, the layout like that as well. So under the overflow here, if we click on that, so you can see that uh, you have some options here. So overflow vertical or horizontal, we'll keep it vertical at the moment. And the overflow style is basically if you have too many categories 
this in your slicer? How should it react? Should it have a continuous scroll or should it have a way to go between pages? So just to show you how that looks like, if I just decrease the rows here on a continuous scroll, it just gives you a scroll bar for you to scroll through your categories and having a paginated just allows you to have this button that goes through page by page on what your options are. But we're going to keep it to continue scroll and actually we're going to just keep it to eight for now just to keep it simple. So now that we have sorted the layout, let's go back up one level here just to show you the other things that are available in this. So you have the shape, uh, which is the shape of the, the buttons here. You have the rectangle by default, but you can choose other things here like the rounded rectangle. I really like this, uh, this view. So just to have maybe just a bit of rounded corners here, you can customize that or you can have a snip tab like this if you want to and both of these views have the ability for you to customize the style so if you wanted to have rounded corners on certain corners only you can adjust that here so maybe you just want the top corner to be rounded like this so maybe we'll just change that to 10 and it kind of looks like tabs. So if you arrange that horizontally, it could look like sort of page navigation, which is which could be a pretty cool implementation. So we've gone through the shapes, the layout. And now we're going to move on to the callout values, which is essentially the value that you see on the actual buttons themselves. Now the callout value, the values and the label, all of these you will notice has this option, the state option. So what this means is that it lets you control control how the buttons look like based on what the state of that button is. So what should the writing say if you have it hovered or by default or when it's selected, you can adjust a lot of its states from and using this, uh, this option. So we're going to go through an example of how you can, you know, fully customize your buttons using this formatting option. So along with that, you also have some other options here, uh, like label, uh, which just adds another uh, set of data underneath your main callout. We're going to use that later and I'm going to show you how you can use it. Um, but you know, you have other customization options you available for you here for different states if you wanted to. So values is just what is currently being shown here. So the text itself, if you want to change the font or you know how it's uh, displayed the alignment things like this the images here lets you add an image for each of your buttons now at the moment you can't upload it you need to use a direct url image so again that's something that i'm going to show you how you can do later but from these image, you can customize the image, things like how it fits, transparency, saturation, position, things like this. A bunch of ways that you can customize how your image is being shown on the buttons. Throughout all of these changes and formatting options, what I really like is the fact that there are so many ways that you can, you know, you can conditionally format various things. So for example, if you go back to the callout values, I just saw the just a bunch of things that you can add conditional formatting to, which as someone who likes to customize, you know, how my values are shown on the page is extremely helpful just because it means that I can just write my own DAX query and then just use this as a way to control those properties. So now we've gone through the images, the callout values, and the buttons are, you know, the same type of thing that you would use for buttons and same things that you would customize. So things like borders, fills, shadows, glows, uh, accent bars, if you wanted to use them. So that's pretty handy. Um, we're going to go through adjusting these now so we can make this look a little bit neater. So now that we've gone through the basic features that you can customize using the new button slicer, let's have a go at this example that I was talking to you about and I want to just try to copy and and you already saw the format but I wanted to copy the, the example that the Power BI team has showed us as on the November 2023 blog and this is basically the what we're going to try to copy today so the things that are selected are sort of highlighted as blue and then if they are not selected they are kind of faded out like this with the low saturation and you know which looks a lot better than the current tile slicer so let's go back to this bit here let's just delete this one and let's just start from the beginning here so let's start by adding the category name and using the new slicer here 
I'm gonna adjust the layout like before. So adjust it to eight rows, one column. It's a little bit big, so just make it a little bit smaller here. So this just gives us the default view of what you would get if you have or are just working on this for the first time. Now, before we start customizing this slicer, I just wanna try to sort out the image URLs that we're gonna need to visualize those these different categories. So what you'll notice here is that in my data model, in my categories data model, and it's the only one that we'll be kind of looking at today. We have the category name, which is gonna be our callout, the description, which is gonna be our detail or label. And then we have an image URL here, which is a direct URL link to the actual images themselves. So for my images, at least for public images, I use this website called ImageBB, and it lets you upload and get direct links for your images. So, so just as an example here, uh, I've already created all of the thumbnails that I wanted to use for the button slicer. All I needed to do is just drag them into this website, just hit upload. And what it will do is it will just give us that direct link URL, which we can then use uh, in our data model. So I've done all of the legwork so you don't have to. What I've done is I've just created all of those images, linked them to the right categories, and then just merged them so that you didn't have to worry about, you know, uh, fussing around with it. Yeah, so now that we have those images set up, let's start customizing our button slicer. So first things first, let's go through it from top to bottom. So let's adjust the shape of this to a rounded rectangle, because as I said, I quite like that, that look. So let's adjust the rounded corners to 10. And uh, okay, so now for the layout, we've already done that. Maybe we can even do top. I'm not sure if that makes any difference. Yeah, that's it. So let's go now to the call out label. Let's keep the value as it is. And uh, for the label itself, let's enable that because we want to show the description here, right? So we're gonna add data, go to categories and then just use description there. So here we go. It's a little bit small. So we're gonna, just gonna make it a little bit smaller and we're gonna just expand this a little bit so we can see that writing. Okay, so actually just make it a little bit bigger. Here we go. So now let's go to the image. Let's add the image that we want. So here we're going to add the field, the URL field for that image, um, which what it will do, I think is it will just add it at the top by default. I'm not sure why you can't see it, maybe because there's not enough space. So we're just going to put it in the left instead here change the image fit to normal. And from here, you just gotta play around with it really. So let's make it so that the image size is a little bit smaller or rather the image area size just to be a little bit smaller than this. Yeah. So you just play around with it as you like. Uh, let's just leave it like that. I'm not too, too fussed about that. And now let's adjust how the actual things react to the different states. So at the moment, when we hover over this, not like it just uses the default kind of interactions, but we want to customize this a little bit more. So let's select that again. And let's adjust first of all, from the bottom, let's adjust the image itself. So let's change the saturation of this to 0% so that when we're hovering over it, we want the saturation to be 100%. So when it's hovering, for example, we'll change the saturation to 100%. So it's a lot more like you can see that you are actually hovering over it, which looks pretty neat. So same thing that we'll do with the selected, just make sure that the saturation for the image is 100%. So when you have beverages selected, you want the image to be 100% saturated so that it's colored and that it's clearly depicting that you have that selection selected. So that is the image done. The next thing that we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna do on the buttons themselves. So on the borders and uh, the fill, which uh, by default, I think this is actually fine by default. We're just gonna change it uh, when it's hovered, for example. So we're just gonna choose the default color here, the blue for both the border and the fill. The only thing that we're gonna change is its transparency. So for the border, we want it to be 75% 
and then the fill to be a lot lighter like 90 percent so as you hover over you'll see that the border because it's 75 percent it's still you can still see it but it's just a little bit darker than the actual background fill so we want to apply this to the value that we have selected not just when it's hovered so we're just gonna go and uh, do that so i'm selected just do the same thing so change it to the same color transparency border 75 fill 90 percent so the text or the callout values don't look too good because when it's selected it just changes into white so we're just gonna adjust that quickly which is gonna be here in the callout values so on hover just see yeah on hover it's okay so the only thing that needs to be adjusted is when it's selected which is not meant to be white so actually the callout we want to be black and the actual label itself the description we want this to be blue so when it's selected you can clearly see what is selected based on the coloring and that's really it for this video i hope that has given you some inspiration and some ideas on how you can customize and use this new feature for yourself thanks for watching as usual give this video a like if you found it useful give it a dislike if you didn't so how to do better for next time ask your questions in the comment section box below so i can help you and you can help others if you like this video we have a patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos thanks again for watching and see you in the next one bye bye